Hello, everybody. My name is Tim Muting. I'm with CE Technologies, and today I've got Dan O'Brien here with me. He's one of our resident experts in the field of release automation. Dan, what are you going to show us today? Tim, today I'm going to show you CA release automation. I'm going to show you how easy it is to use the tool to deploy complex applications within your infrastructure. Very good. And I think we talked about there's a couple other components that are going to be included in this demonstration. Yeah, so we have um, CA's own Harvest Source Control Manager system, which we'll integrate with. Um, as well as CA Lisa Service Virtualization. Very good. Let's see what you've got. Okay. So let's let's take you for a walk through a typical um, application deployment using CA Release Automation. Um, along with Release Automation, we're also going to integrate with a source control system from CA called Harvest. Um, release Automation integrates with with really any source control system that you have out there. Um, we'll use Harvest for this example. We're also going to deploy um, as part of this multi-tier application, we're going to deploy an IIS website, we're going to deploy a MySQL database, and we're going to integrate that um, with a continuous integration server as well. So if we take a look, before we even get started, I'll just show you briefly that we have no websites here, just a default website on IIS, nothing else there, right? So keep that in mind. And if I look at uh, MySQL, we've got these one, two, three, four, five, six databases, but we're going to add another one there. So I'll show you how easily we can do that with release automation. So looking at the, the interface here, we're looking at the design studio, the automation studio. And here, it's an application you know, level based program. So at the very top layer, at the root of the, of the program is the application. So you go into the application, and from within the application, you're going to see um, these three tabs, components, processes, and environments. The components are what make up the logical areas of your application. So you see here harvest, the, the source control, the web, the database, and a manifest file for, um, for making changes to your application flow dynamically without having to re-engineer anything. Okay, the components, if you open up the components here, let's just open up IIS. The components are comprised of actions and flows. Now an action is really the, simple, the simplest or the smallest building block of of what you do within release automation. So you, you string together actions into flows and you take those flows and you, you publish them into processes which you can run in your different environments. So in this case, a simple action for creating of a website. Um, you give, in this action, you would give the website name, the bindings, the port, and the path. Um, all these actions um, can be re reused across your application and across all your different environments. And a way to do that is to variableize these parameters. So for example, I'll drill into flows before we run this implementation. If I click on deploy a website, again, flows are a series of actions that are joined together. So you see here in this case, we're going to start off by looking to see if the website exists. And based on the red circles here, if it does not exist, we're going to do a few things. First, we're going to create it. Then we're going to go ahead and install an application. We'll also at the same time, if the website does not exist, go ahead and do some configuration, some file manipulation, um, creating database users, that sort of thing. We can bring tie all these flows together in the logical sequence that you would in order to install the application and then publish them to your respective environments. So in this case, we've got a development, production, and QA. And what you'll notice here on the right-hand side for this, for this development environment is that we can assign servers um, to the respective environments that you're going to use, but we can also change them at runtime. So very dynamic in nature in its configuration. So we basically decouple the physical server itself from um, the environment that it runs in to give you that uh, dynamic flexibility uh, for your release operations. So let's go ahead and deploy this application. I'll click on application full deploy, which is just a series of um, workflows or flows that are built together um, and then connected with these arrows that you see here. Let's go ahead and run it. Now when I run it again, I have the, the option of using the, the servers that are assigned to these particular server types, or if I double click, I could actually change them right now at runtime if I wanted to. So let's go ahead and run that. Now when this runs, um, it'll first run through the initialization process, and it's asking me for the name of, of the website. I'll just call it forwarding, keep it simple. And that's a user, that's a, the, an example of how to do user interaction within the flow. I could have easily have, have had that website name um, automatically populated. So it runs through all these different actions that you see on the screen are actually completed. The process is finished. 
as it's running, um, you can get a detailed view of the different server types to see what the progress is and what the status is. And you can also see an events view of every single action that ran, um, all the details about that action, whether it passed or failed, and then you know, the, the various details. And you can see we actually do have some failures here. So find a website, backup current website. Um, the reason it failed is because the website was not there. So that's actually an expected failure. Um, so we anticipated that. Now if I flip over really quick to IIS, you should see this forwarding website that we designed right here that we built. And if I go to MySQL and I just refresh that, we should see this forwarding database. So a simple example, but a way in which you can use the power of release automation to easily build um, complex multi-tier applications. And if I go to my browser, the server name ITADO on this port 8088, it wasn't there before, but if I click it now, it should come up. And we've, we've just built this Forward Inc. Uh, WordPress website. So a full application install um, all the way through. So now, let's say that we want to go ahead and make a change to this application, right? That's, it's in production. Changes are happening. There are builds. There are, there, are, there are changes that are being checked back into the source control repository. And we want to go ahead and, and, and put those changes into, you know, out into your environments. So let's move over. And let's take a look at the user um, operational interface called the Release Operations Center. And from here, you'll see the same applications that we, we have that we've designed within the Automation Studio. You'll see them here within the Release Operations Center. So I'll go into the customer portal, and then we have a, a series of templates that we can execute. So let's go ahead and run this content update. Um, this comes up, we'll go ahead and create a release. We'll just give it a, a name. And we'll give it a version, say 5.2. And we can run this in any environment that, that we have access to run in. So we'll run it in, in development. Let's go ahead and create that release. OK, so you'll see here, once the release is, 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 is created, it runs through an initialization process. Um, it's waiting for user input. What's telling us is that um, a previous version of the application has been found. Do I want to run a backup? So I'll say, sure, run a backup. And what you will see is on a deployment step here, we will dynamically add those steps into the deployment area. So you see the perform backup is now on step number three. That was dynamically inserted at runtime here. And we have dependencies along the way. So once this initialization step completes, um, we could then define a schedule to, to run this release you know, at your, you know, your, your time of choosing, whether it be overnight or whenever you run your runs. So we'll go ahead for this example today. We'll just go and run it right now. Now while it's running, what will happen is you'll see each one of the steps, and again, based on a dependency, we can run steps one and two concurrently. Um, then we'll run the backup once uh, step one is complete. And then we'll do num step number four, which is really the, um, the big payload. That's the content update. So that's going out to the source control repository. That's picking up the files um, that we needed, that we, that we got in the initialization step, making sure we have the right versions of those files, and so on and so forth. So again, it's asking me, um, for some input, so it just wants the name of that website. So I'll just supply it here with user interactivity. We'll apply that. And it should now run through the content update. It should complete. And then once it's done, we can actually run a smoke test with service virtualization and run the post deployment. Well, we can see here that we have, a, we have a failure on the update. So let's kind of take a look at that. So when you get a failure within release automation, one of the really nice things is that it doesn't stop, doesn't abort the, the release. It pauses it. So you can actually go in here and take a look, and it says that we're having trouble with a particular file, um, deploy.log. So if we know, if we get a hold of the person who's in charge of, who uploaded this, um, these files, we can actually take a look at it. And if we go into the source control repository, we can see that this deploy log file has a plus sign next to it, which just means that somebody failed to check it in. That's all. So it wasn't committed. So let's go ahead and commit that. And then once we do that, we can actually go back to the release. And we can resume it. And hopefully that was the whole problem, which it looks like it is. It's back to green. It's running. And it's going to execute. Once the content update is complete, which it is, you'll see we're going to go ahead and um, concurrently we'll run a Elisa service virtualization web test and we'll run our process deployment validations. And then we'll finally go back into our source control system and update it with a new build, uh, which we're doing right now. 
And you can see here, customer portal running, and now it has succeeded. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So let's go back to that application, and let's take a look. Let's just refresh it. So let's see, just go here, a simple refresh. And you can see here that we've simply just changed some content on the main page of this, of this application. So that's really all you have to do in order to use release automation to update, uh, create full applications and update them along the way. That was great, Dan. Um, you had mentioned earlier in your, de in your demonstration here something about a manifest or manifest-driven deployment. Can yeah. you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So, so the manifest approach, um, what this does, it allows us to use the same content that we've already built and designed for application releases throughout the entire lifecycle. We don't have to make changes as we go from development to staging and production. We don't have to make changes if we go from different versions of, of um, configuration items within the repositories. We make changes simply to the manifest file, and that gets applied across the application deployment. So I design the process once, I can deploy it across all my environments as many times as I want. Exactly. Very, very good. To learn more about CA Release Automation and all our other demos, check out CA.com.